Yo guys, what is going on? It is Invin here and today what I'm bringing to you all is a video on the May PTR update 3 and as you guys can see here, this is the third iteration of the patch notes from the PTR but not only that, it's actually covering some really important stuff as you'll be able to tell from the title, the blunderbuss has finally been nerfed. Now, there's some really important changes in here and it just proves the importance of the PTR, but some really cool stuff. I'm mostly going to summarize all of these points because there's quite a lot to cover here, but I'm going to give you the crucial information along with generally what has happened. Of course, if you do want to read the full amount, they will be linked in the description below so you can do that as well. Now, if you do go on to enjoy today's video and you haven't already done so, please do make sure that you go down below and press the big red subscribe button with the notification bell on as that would be much, much appreciated. And if you do go on to enjoy the video and find it useful then please do drop me a like as well as that really really helps me out on YouTube with the algorithm and all that good stuff and let's jump straight into it. So if you are someone that's playing on the PTR currently you're testing out the 3v3s etc the backstories have been updated which means that you can start with 625 gear score items so you certainly want to re-roll a character refresh it whatever you want to do and get yourself that higher tier gear that's going to be much much better also they've done a few changes here so the first thing is going to be to game modes looking at outpost rush specifically and it's just essentially not getting rid of items when you look in a loot bag but don't get a chance to pick it up whether through dodging or through attacking or someone attacking you it's not going to destroy those items are still going to be there to go and pick up now now in terms of the pvp arenas then this is the big hard-hitting one that a lot of us are really looking forward to and this has really really taken a turn in a positive direction with these further updates and again it reiterates why the ptr is so important so essentially they've adjusted huds to accommodate for non 16 by 9 resolutions which just means it's going to be more cleaner interface for everybody scoreboards actually show proper scores generally what they've done is adjusted all of the bits around the ui that were kind of outdated or not working as intended same with the scoreboard we've seen tons of updates obviously when people disconnect and things it gives you wrong names it gives you deaths and random extra kills here and there all of that should be cleaned up now they've also fixed all of the remaining issues with allowing players to attack from the spectating box which is super important i'm glad that's been done also fixed an issue causing the arena furniture items to drop significantly more often than intended if you've played the ptr you've probably got a house full of these they are very very cool but they are supposed to be a little bit more rare so things like that have been adjusted as well now they have also fixed a few typers a few audio glitches all of that good stuff which is great and generally made this much much more smoother experience overall in terms of the ui the audio elements and all of that good stuff not too much on the gameplay specifically this time but at the bottom here they have said the match will now end if only one team ends up joining the match which was an issue you could get one team loaded in the other not on the b just have to wait out the timer which is really odd uh, but that's been fixed and also now fixed the issue that allowed more than groups of three people to queue for the arena game mode you were getting groups of four and five getting in for some reason and um, it wasn't working out too well for them but they were able to get in there so that's now been fixed now quick fix to wars where they basically fixed the bug with the fort turrets where they were unable to be placed or replaced now they can be replaced now in terms of mechanics here dodging they have done some big changes too and this is really really important so what they've done here is fixed an issue where the stamina regen delay was lasting longer than intended in certain circumstances now this is really important because a lot of people have been complaining about the way that stamina has changed and a lot of people have been really unhappy with how it's working but this is what they've done essentially so it says currently your stamina regeneration is delayed by one second wherever stamina is consumed in the live build this means that your stamina won't start regenerating until 0.5 seconds after you exit the dodge animation if you cancel the dodge early eg by moving in the ptr we added a one second stamina regen delay when you exit the dodge effectively increasing that delay by 0.5 seconds compared to what is in the live build so this was an unintentional addition to that essentially so now it will be halved in time and it should be what we are used to on the live servers currently should be reflected in the ptr so they're not really changing all too much in terms of stamina regen so that is a massive positive for a lot of players and i think a lot of people will be happy to hear that so that's a really really cool one perks they've just kind of fixed up a couple of things but main thing here is the elemental attunement now actually tells you which things would proc it certain abilities etc in the tooltip so you can more accurately depict where and when you shouldn't be getting this proc 
Also, we've got some big changes on the weapons. Like I said, the blunderbuss, this bad boy has had some huge changes. Now, to summarise this for you guys, again, like I said, it will be linked in the description, these notes in their entirety. So if you do want to check them out individually and go over all of the stats, feel free to do so. But essentially, what has happened with the blunderbuss then, we've got Shrapnel Blast has had a decreased damage per bullet of 8%. The Azoth Bomb has had a double in the increase to its delay before the explosion, so it's gone from a 0.5 to a 1 second. Also, Blast Shot, you've seen a 20% damage reduction on this, but Net Shot has seen a big buff. We've got an increase of 30% damage from 40% to 70%, and an increased slow duration from 2.5 to 3 seconds. Not only that, the upgrades for the Net Shot through the passive tree on the skill trees there. You've had Apparatus, they've had the increased slow duration from 5 seconds to 7 seconds, and they have reduced the slow degeneration over time from 10% reduction per second second to 6% reduction per second. Also, we've had a 25% increase of damage per second on the barb netting, so that is going to be the tick one, so you're going to get a 30% damage tick for 3 seconds, equal into 90% overall, which is very nice. And also the ultimate which is the unload ability, has had the reduced number of additional pellets, reduced to two from three. So essentially you're not going to be getting as much DPS from that one as you were, as that is of course what was allowing for that one-shot combo to really be in full fruition. Hopefully this should combat the combination that we were seeing before, but it is still going to put the blunderbuss in a great position, and it's actually encouraged and really, really increased the odds of it being used as a utility-based weapon, which I think is a really, really cool thing, and will be vastly used in wars and arenas alone. Like. Now we've seen some quick changes as well to the ice gauntlet, the musket, the spear and the rapier. These are basically just to fix a few issues in terms of desync or delays, that kind of thing. So just making these weapons more consistent, which is always a bonus. World AI, you've got named loot added to the following AI. There's a list of them on screen for you guys now. Essentially what named loot will mean is that they have a chance to drop better loot, which again, always a positive thing. Economy progression then, we're looking here. They've removed the gem sockets from invasion shields. Obviously shields don't have those. And they've fixed some visual issues with Barbaria Bruiser Helmet and Chest. Rewards and Loot. They've updated the Upgrade Tooltip to list the count of how many more you'll need, rather than displaying the only the total count. This is a little ambiguous as to what it means. I'm assuming it is referring to the Umbral Shards. In other words, it's going to tell you you need another 2,200 Umbral Shards to upgrade, rather than saying you've got 2,200 and you don't have enough. So that would be really cool if that is the case. I will have to confirm as it doesn't actually say what it's relating to, but I think it's Umbral Shards. So that's a pretty cool one. Uh, the PvP track then, this is where they have fixed an issue causing certain rewards on the PvP track to roll at lower rarities. Essentially, you're going to see accessories be a higher rarity now, which is great for us all. And the longer your PvP flag for, the more XP you're going to get for getting kills or someone is going to get for killing you. So be aware that when that comes in, you're going to want to be careful. Trade skills, they've done some changes to fishing here to enable the ability to stack fishing trophies so it's consistent with the other ones. You weren't able to do that before, now you can, so fishing is actually a little better. So they've also adjusted the trophies to coincide with the rest of the other trade skills in New World. Quality of life stuff then, Spirit Shrines will now have their correct name displayed on the respawn screen for better clarity. Pretty decent, I think most people will be happy about that. You will also get a reticle that will appear on the map over a currently selected respawn location, so you can kind of see exactly where you're going to be respawning, which is very, very cool. They've also done some notable fixes in terms of world experience, where they've fixed an issue with the heavy use of effect abilities, e.g. in a war, could cause the foliage to screen flicker, which is really annoying. If you've played the wars, you know how much this can happen. Thankfully, that's been removed now. And the respawn point for tent camp skins has been relocated to the front porch of the tent for all variants of the tent skins. Obviously, some of them were causing a few issues here and there, so that has now been standardised across the board, which is cool. Couple of fixes to quests and a quick fix to the expedition, the Tempest Heart, which is the newest one, which they've fixed additional collision issues in the Shartam's area. Again, finally just fixing up these last few bits there that were kind of still a bit clunky, which is brilliant. So overall, just a very concise update, some really, really good changes, especially on the Blunderbuss. A lot of people are going to be very happy about that. So 
great changes overall. Still, we're about two weeks out, I would estimate, two to two and a half weeks out from this update fully coming out, and we've seen three editions of notes so far. So it's looking really, really good. Obviously, if you've got feedback, chuck it on the forums for the guys over at Amazon Game Studio, because by the looks of it, they really are interacting with us on this update and really taking feedback on board, which is amazing. And yeah, big props to them for this, but that is going to be it for today's video, guys. If you have enjoyed, be sure to drop me a like and subscribe down below. Praise the algorithm for me. It really, really does help to support my content. And other than that, I would like to thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. And I will catch you again very, very shortly on a brand new upload. Take care, guys. And peace.